Alright, Uncle Sam FM here, and this is going to be kind of the 2019 wrap-up episode. And I uh, thought we would just start with kind of how the NCAA tournament shook out after we got eliminated in the first round. Um, so, Maryland knocked us out on penalties, and then they went into the second round and lost to Nebraska-Omaha. Which I kind of found interesting because we played Nebraska Omaha in our in the regular season, and I don't know if it'll let me still pull up the result, <clears throat> but we, yeah, I guess it will. Uh, we should have won this game, um, controlled it pretty well, pretty much from start to finish, twenty to ten shots wise, uh, almost seventy percent possession, and um, so they. Uh, did what we couldn't, and they they finished at least one of their opportunities, and they put Maryland out. So then Nebraska Omaha goes into the third round, and they absolutely run Indiana off the field six to zero, which Indiana was one of the strongest college programs. Um, well, yeah, you see, they won the national championship eight times, so. Um, that's kind of a surprise result for Nebraska Omaha. So they go into the quarterfinal and then they take on Stanford, another elite college soccer program. Uh, they have won the national championship three times. They produced, of course, um, Jordan Morris. Yeah, there you go, Jordan Morris. Uh, Todd Dunavant, who some of you might recognize, probably not many. But uh, so they're a strong college program and Nebraska Omaha just blows them out five to one and they go to the semifinal and then they beat Western Michigan who's not as strong a program but they go into the final but lose to Notre Dame so I think that kind of shows you how close we really kind of were to um, to really going deep into this tournament as a team that we drew within the regular season and outplayed <laughs> knocked out the team that put us out then beat another elite program got all the way to the final so um, it Obviously, losing in the first round stings. That's not how we wanted to end the season. But, uh, again, we're, we're close. We're close. So, before we look at the rest of the um, uh, leagues in the United States, we will quickly look at the awards we got. Uh, so, didn't get anybody in the top three for the NCAA Player of the Year, but it was won by Mark Johnson from Nebraska, Omaha. Probably well earned. Um, he also won the NCAA Freshman of the Year Award, which typically goes to first-year players. Um, then you had uh, Carter went from Western Michigan, wins the Goalkeeper of the Year Award in the NCAA, but Peter Santangelo, our goalkeeper, got third, so that was an impressive showing for him. And uh, the Southern Conference All-First Team, this was from uh, the regular season results from the Southern Conference, and obviously we <laughs> dominated this team. Really kind of a surprise that all four of our back line um, got all conference, which that's that was easily the weakness of our team. But apparently, you know, they played above and beyond their abilities. Um, we also got Zion Jones and uh, Padone and the, on the first team, so good showing for us there. Uh, Zion Jones also finished second in the running for the Southern Conference Player of the Year. First place went to John Smith. Um, from Furman and Furman also won the freshman of the year award and again Zion Jones finishes second there Santangelo did win the goalkeeper of the year award and I forgot to congratulate him on that so I'll go ahead and do that um, our manager Tony Stark wins the Southern Conference coach of the year award so well done for Tony um, and yeah so their board was pleased uh, Edge claimed the MVP of the Southern Conference Tournament, which kind of doesn't feel right, considering that Wofford did not even make it to the final, but it is what it is. And um, these were the uh, NCAA awards. We didn't get anybody in the top three of these. So, But that was uh, kind of how the season wrapped up for college soccer. Um, obviously, we hope to have a better showing next year, maybe get a couple rounds in. But let's go ahead and real quick look at how... Um, leagues around the United States went. So Montreal wins the MLS Cup. They won the Eastern Conference over Columbus and they beat Seattle who won the Western Conference. Uh, the Supporter Shield went to New York City so they will get uh, the um, they will get one of the, auto, the CONCACAF Champions League berths 
and the other two will go to Seattle and Montreal. Um, the uh, uh, the Open Cup went to San Jose in a um, bit of a surprise result for them, but so they will go to the CONCACAF Champions League as well. Um, and the MLS All Stars beat Atlanta in the All Star game. Moving into the uh, USL Championship, Nashville SC wins the East. Uh, New Mexico wins the West, and the regular season champion for the USL Championship was Orange County, and the USL Cup winner was New Mexico. They beat Nashville in the final, so good on them. In League One, it was Orlando City winning the league playoffs over Tormenta, and in the NISA, Miami FC, no big surprise there, as they'll be moving into the USL Championship next season, kind of a promotion. We saw... um, Notre Dame winning the uh, in the uh, national championship for NCAA soccer, and tell you what, we're not. I'm going to spare you from all of the conference results. Um, so we'll go down. The uh, academy championship was won by Golden State Academy. They beat Timbers F or Timbers Academy in the final. Uh, oops, USL League Two. Yeah, was won by uh, Des Moines. And let's see, for some reason it's showing. Yeah, so league playoffs was won by the Des Moines Menace. Des Moines also will be moving up in a couple of years, so not a big surprise result there. Um, I guess we can look at the Members Cup. That was won by the Cosmos as they um, pretty much tore through that. They won every single game, get maximum points. Um, so good on the Cosmos. And. The Generation Adidas Cup goes to the Lyon under-19s. Um, so well done for them, winning the Champions Division of the Adidas Cup. And so that kind of gives you a quick wrap-up on um, U.S. soccer in 2019. Looking ahead, I uh, well, I'll go ahead. First of all, let's look at our transfers. I did bring in um, several players. Uh, this is my recruiting class for next season. Some of these guys will probably be too young. But uh, starting right here with Carlos Barrera, um, decent player. Uh, it's one of the things I would look for is personality. I'm sure I'm not the only one. And you'll notice that all these guys have a, a desirable personality. And um, Barrera will come in play striker. Um, Derek Martinez from Knoxville United will come in. He'll be my right winger. Uh, Fairly determined personality. He has a 16 determination. That made him, that made him stand out uh, to me. But obviously, there are some things that we've got to improve. But um, you know, at 17, that's pretty good. Uh, Vargas is another one who I found from Knoxville United. Uh, balanced personality. I don't usually like signing those, but he had a good determination. I like his bravery for some reason and his aggression. Um, as a defender, I'm kind of hoping that that will sort of make him sort of a shutdown player in the back. Um, Josue Roman, um, professional. Um, that was, the, the, his personality kind of caused me to overlook his, his determination. Determination is only eight. So I'm kind of hoping with a professional personality we can get that determination up. Uh, he'll be playing probably right wing. He can play striker. Uh, he has good finishing uh, and good heading, so um, I might have to look to take advantage of that. Uh, Steve Perry, um, I guess he took a time off from lead singing for uh, Journey to come play soccer, although that's P-A-R-R-Y. I think the Journey lead singer was P-E-R-R-Y. Um, fairly professional. He's fast, and that was the big thing that stuck out to me was you know, he's such a fast player. Hopefully that'll help him if he's playing up front, playing striker for me. And uh, the 15 finishing is also, so we, when you get a 16 pace and a 15 finishing, couple that with a 14 determination, um, that's, yeah, those are definitely good attributes for a striker. Um, after uh pair, we have Sterling Swinehart. Um, his 19 in determination um, was something that, uh, if you look at his attributes, obviously, there's not a lot there that grabs you, but that 19 determination. Um, my scouts rate him as a four-star potential ability, as you can see. So my hope is that um, his personality will help him to improve to get better. Um, 
So it'll, you know, it'll hopefully it'll help them overachieve on the field. Is in my experience that determination does that. It helps you to o to o it helps your player to overachieve, um, achieve beyond his attributes. And then we have Chris Cronkey, who um, I'm probably I'm kind of I'm of two minds what I'm going to do with him. Um, he only has a six tackling, but uh, I'm thinking about moving my fullbacks up to the wingback strata being a little more aggressive uh, and getting more players going forward next season. And so he kind of, um, I, I'm, I've got right now looking at my squad, I have enough wingers, um, but I would like to develop some depth at fullback. So that's probably where I'm going to put him. Um, if not, he's already, he's, I mean, he's awkward, well, unconvincing, but he has, you know, he's got a start there at left, at left wing. So I might, I might, if the fullback thing doesn't look like, the wingback thing doesn't look like it's going to work, I'll just put him as a left winger and we'll go from there. Um, so then we have Aldo Ruiz, uh, wingback on the left. Uh, he's already ready to play wingback on the left. Again, 16 in determination, and he's got some good physical attributes. So hopefully that'll help him overcome some technical mistakes. And then we got Andrew Webb. This is a transfer player from uh, Greensboro. And yeah, he's um, he. I remember he, in I watched the game we played against him, um, the, the regular season match, and he was he had an outstanding game. And for some reason, going into that game, I, I noticed his tackling at 17. And so uh, I didn't know about his determination when I scouted him, but when I saw that, I was I I at least have to offer just to see if we can get him. And he. He transferred. He chose to transfer. So, so that's a big get. Uh, he'll start right away, probably at left back. You see, he's got a four-star current ability. Doesn't look like he'll get much better, but um, those attributes right there will probably be enough to make him one of the better players in our conference. So, so that's my recruiting class for next year. Um, I won't, um, I won't drag this thing out. Next uh, episode, we'll probably be looking at our first game of neck of the 2020 season. As we look to improve on our uh, what was a good strong start, good first season, but now we want we will, we want a challenge. We want to um, we want to start challenging for that national championship, and hopefully this group of players that I've brought in will help us start to build a program where we can be a consistent um, consistent competitor for the national championship. So this is Uncle Sam signing off. I will see you next time. <laughs>